Over the past centuries, Earth's temperature has increased by 0.8 degrees Celsius. Temperature is expected to rise at an increasing rate in future. Evidence from scientists indicates that human activities like emissions from factories, power plants, and vehicles have been releasing greenhouse gases, especially carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. These activities intensify greenhouse effect and result in global warming and climate change. Some of the evidence of this is rapid melting of Arctic sea ice, glaciers, and mountain snow. Studies from NASA have shown that Arctic ice has decreased by 10% in the last 30 years. Furthermore, the increases in sea temperature and ocean acidification have caused the bleaching of coral reefs. If these trends continue, it might be too late to save planet Earth. So, we have to act now. We have to start doing something to save the world. Building construction is one of the most resource consuming sectors. They have big shares on freshwater consumption, wood harvest, CO2 emissions, energy use, and raw materials used. As trends show, building construction contributes even more to CO2 emissions than transport and industry, so a change in the construction industry can have a significant impact on reducing CO2 emissions. It stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. It is a system to define green buildings, comprising six dimensions, sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, indoor environmental quality, and innovation in design. It evaluates buildings' environmental performance through its whole life cycle, from construction to demolition, looking for the reduction of environmental impact in all stages. At the end of the process of certification, the project is awarded with points for complying with environmental standards. According to those points, it may achieve the levels of certified, silver, gold, or platinum. For the LEED certification project, CAUST has the following features. Sustainable sites. The buildings are located and grouped to minimize the impact to the site and maximize the benefits from the site microclimate. The monumental reflective roof. This roof system shield the campus buildings from the environment, reducing excessive solar gain, but allowing light to air tombs and courtyards. The same roof hosts 12,000 square meters of solar panel, being able to generate up to 3,300 megawatt hours annually. Natural daylight to reduce lighting. The buildings are designed to optimize the use of daylight, reducing the need to use artificial lighting. To reduce the heat gain, all buildings have a protective outer skin that reflects most of the radiation. For water efficiency, CAUS has low flow plumbing fixtures. The washroom facilities are equipped with waterless urinals, water saving toilets, and automated fixtures, with a projected reduction of 56% of water consumption. Native and adaptive species were chosen for landscaping because they require less irrigation to survive. The campus has a wastewater treatment plant designed to treat daily 9,500 cubic meters of wastewater. That means almost 3.5 million cubic meters yearly. All treated water will be used to irrigate the golf course and gardens around campus. Energy and atmosphere. This system seeks to reduce the amount of energy used and to use it in beneficial form. They include underfloor air conditioning, Occupancy detectors for lighting, solar arrays for heating water, low pressure loss duct and piping design, and other 15 systems. Materials and resources. This system seeks to reduce the environmental footprint for the extraction, processing, use, and disposal of the materials required for the construction and life of the buildings. Local concrete and steel were used, reducing the impact related with transportation of the materials. Interior finishing products have low levels of volatile organic compounds, known as BOCs, and high levels of recycled content. 
all wooden parts were purchased from sustainable managed forests and are Forest Stewardship Council certified. More than 75% of all construction waste was recycled, diverging a great volume of waste from going to landfills. Indoor environmental quality. This part leads to appropriate level of ventilation and fresh air are provided to the users. All buildings comply with the standards for thermal and environmental requirements of human occupancy. The major features of innovation in design are the two solar towers. They generate passive ventilation for a more comfortable environment by only using radiation from the sun. So now we are going to interview the staff, faculty and students to see their opinion about sustainability and what can we do to improve the, our protection for the environment. Let's go! Are you a sustainable person? Yes, I am. Uh, yes, I think so. Yes, I do. Yeah, something like this. I try to. Uh, can you explain how? Yeah, for instance, uh, the light bulbs and I, the lighting that we have uh, in the homes, mm -hmm. they should be energy savers, which we don't have. And I've, rec I've actually put in a request for energy saving uh, light bulbs, recycling of paper. Uh, what we do here at the library, all the paper that's left around, we actually got a recycling bin and we've made arrangements for this to be taken through to be recycled. Here at KAUST uh, there are two different parts. One is sustainability at the university level, so research in terms of sustainability. The other level of sustainability is in the community, um, separating trash into recyclables and um, general waste, for example. So myself, I try to walk uh, most of the time. And I also, uh, I mean, I'm very motivated by seeing students that are using bicycles. And that's very nice. I and mean, people love using scooters, so they're not using any motor engines. Yeah, I try uh, the, the thing that I know. Mm -hmm. I try to uh, save the water, save the electricity, save the paper, just the simple thing. There are some few things that if many people do it, add up. And one of those things is, for example, the use of um, reusable coffee cups. The next thing is the air conditioning, which takes up a lot of energy. Set the temperature to something that is not like fridge temperature. Mm -hmm. So I have 24 degrees, which is still nice, but it doesn't take up so much energy. And the next thing, of course, is generally just be very conservative in your water usage. Uh, when we go out from the, the room and then we have to switch off the lamp, one plus one plus one, uh, maybe like one, one million. Now we are going to interview a person who deals with recertification in KAUST. The challenges for KAUST in terms of uh, keeping the sustainability um, philosophy and environment past the LEED certification that we just received, I think you will divide it into two big challenges. One is the technical challenge and one is the um, habit forming or cultural challenge. If your one building consumes X, our goal should be to reduce for the next year. So that's one of the technical challenges. The other technical challenge is uh, when you have an organization that, uh, that goes this fast and a uh, university that grows so quick, having the personnel that are trained to be able to maintain such a high sophisticated technology system is going to be extremely challenging. In terms of the habit forming or cultural challenges, I think this is where um, you know, the, 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 the buildings give form, but ultimately the function is defined by the humans, by the users. Certainly we're going to need everybody's involvement, not just the operations team. We're going to need the families that are at Cows, we're going to need the students, we're going to need the faculty to ingrain in everything that we do the philosophy of sustainability, whether it's in a marine biology course, whether it's in a computer science course, whether it's in a math course, just putting in integrate into each of those because if we don't then uh, nobody's uh, not nobody but the, the clear philosophy and picture of, of sustainability is not going to come across students are going to be a key asset and a key factor because you are the gateway generation you are the, the up and coming leaders we're going to need your leadership I would challenge the students to uh, even challenge the operations challenge the university to go beyond what we have now we have a great start. We have a platinum certificate and we have a platinum buildings. Now it's our challenge to keep, keep the spirit and the philosophy to make sure that we are proud of what we have here.